okay so let's get started nidish are you able to see my screen now yes it's perfectly visible great cool so uh, in this topic uh, basically in this session we'll uh, go through a presentation uh, which i prepared and then uh, at the end of the presentation we can do some q and a's okay so let's get started uh, so we'll be talking about uh, applied machine learning uh, its future potential and its career prospects uh, my name is ankit uh, i'm working as a senior machine learning engineer at amazon and uh, if you want to connect with me uh, i'll make these slides available and i'll also post my linkedin at the end of this presentation so feel free to connect with me there happy to answer any questions which you may have uh, after this meeting just a disclaimer before i start this presentation uh, so all the content in this presentation reflect my own views and it does not represent my employer so uh, about myself uh, i have around 8 plus years of industry experience currently working as a senior machine learning engineer at amazon uh, i'm working in the alexa voice shopping organization at this point so basically in alexa you may be getting some reorder recommendations like you may uh, you may be running out of uh, let's say mustard oil uh, so those recommendations which uh, are served to you that is something which uh, uh, my team owns and before that uh, as i've been at amazon for 6 years now uh the good thing about these fan companies is that they are so many business domains that you can internally switch between different teams so before joining alexa voice shopping i was working for uh the amazon devices organization and uh, there my work was to apply machine learning on the amazon product pages so if you go to uh like a product page for echo show so there is like title there is uh image there is uh, description of that particular product so i i worked on applying machine learning to provide optimized content to uh, mm -hmm. basically the people who are visiting the page apart from that uh, i am a advisor and investor in different uh, startups some of them are in india uh, i am an advisory board member in a non profit called ai for good and uh, i'm also a technical reviewer for uh, data science and machine learning engineering books published by packet publication so uh, about my education i have done my masters in machine learning from university of florida and uh, my bachelor's in uh, computer science from nit raipur uh, so what is uh, applied machine learning so basically it is the application of machine learning to a data related business problem and it can involve both supervised as well as unsupervised model and uh, basically uh, applied machine learning works for business problem which are not completely deterministic and so that kind of introduces a need for a statistical methods so if you can think about any kind of machine learning problem right like let's say the facebook news feed uh, which you get so uh, it's it's not a deterministic uh, problem when i say that it means that there is no best uh, news feed for a person or for all the people it has to be personalized and then still it's like a probability that maybe you know uh, maybe you like music videos over uh, i don't know like some interviews Uh, or maybe there is someone who like interviews over music video so that's what it means uh, uh, to be like probabilistic and not deterministic that it tries to make the best guess any uh, applied machine learning problem it has different uh, components so as you can see in this slide it starts with like data preparation then it does data modeling model evaluation and then the model gets deployed and we'll talk about each of these section as we go through just to give you an idea about what a machine learning workflow looks like so what is the future potential of ml so according to a well known report the gartner report uh, 
it says that by 2022 there will be around 2.3 million jobs in the field of artificial intelligence and machine learning there is a pay scale report which reveals that uh, uh, possessing a combination of high tech uh, skills and uh, uh, machine learning skills basically will boost your compensation by 26% machine learning has been among among indeed top 10 best jobs for you know consecutive years of 2019 and 2020 so that itself speaks a lot because indeed is uh, a very major platform which uh, people use for uh, doing their job search so the results which they are getting and is basically based on the data they have about the number of postings and the people then looking for those jobs uh, so it kind of speaks for the uh, need for knowing machine learning and growing it as your skill set uh then again some more data around it it's expected to produce around 130 million jobs uh by 2026 and uh on an average uh, a software engineer working in ai get around the average of $100,000 to $250,000 uh and it is estimated that ai skills will witness a 71% rise in job demand so this kind of speaks for all this data i have put in there to kind of uh provide more insights into what the potential for ml is what these people who are you know in this uh uh business of recruiting like indeed like gartner reports the, these are basically seeing that there is a huge demand for it so career paths and ml so basically there are many career paths which are possible because this domain is uh, just so huge uh, like there is natural language processing there is computer vision there is applied machine learning but i'm going to cover the uh, most popular ones where you get like most of the job openings and then i'll just list down some others as well so uh one of them is like a machine learning engineer so uh, basically a machine learning engineer what he does is he uh, runs various machine learning experiments using different programming languages like python java scala with uh, appropriate machine learning library so that's the uh, i would say the difference between uh, like a software engineer and a machine learning engineer where a machine learning engineer needs to be more equipped with the machine learning libraries we will go into more details in the later slides about around the responsibilities and the skill sets required for machine learning engineer the next is a data scientist and so basically data scientist uses advanced uh, analytical techniques uh, including machine learning and predictive modeling to go collect the data analyze it and basically these data sets are pretty large uh and then uh, come up with actionable insights which can be like a uh, trained model uh so in this particular case uh they need to know the knowledge of some big data technologies like hadoop and fig and hive so that they can actually uh, uh work on large data sets and then they need to have a uh, knowledge of uh, python and scala as well some other career paths uh, there is like nlp scientist business uh, intelligence engineer uh, ml data associate data lawyer ai ethicist so these are you know if, uh, different career paths which are possible they are kind of emerging uh, and each of them have their own uh, kind of skill set so like a data lawyer is mainly like a uh, legal person who Uh, is aware about GDRP uh, data compliance or any such data compliance which a company may have, so they kind of excel in that. Uh, ML data associate is uh, I've seen this term used in different places, but uh, one of them is like someone who is kind of uh, responsible for data tagging, which can be used for model training. So yeah, these are the different career paths, and uh, in the remaining slides, we'll basically be. focusing on machine learning engineer and data scientist so just uh, you know let's go through this uh, slide once uh, to know what it is and in a minute we'll get started with the remaining part of the presentation okay i think everyone must have had a good look at it so let's move forward 
Okay, so uh, machine learning engineer versus like data scientists, data scientists. So basically, this is uh, highlighting the differences between each of these roles. Uh, there is possibility that uh, there will be overlap between these two roles, and it is bound to happen. Uh, but there are uh, certain differences. Uh, so one is like data scientist works more on the modeling side, whereas a machine learning engineer tend to focus more on deployment of that model. Then data scientist focuses on uh, the ML algorithms, which we are going to use, like whether it be um, like ensemble methods or whether it be like XG rules or random forest or whatnot. So they deal mainly with the ML algorithms. Uh, they try to optimize it. Uh, and they're uh, basically, they should be knowing more of the ins and outs of those uh, algorithms. And on the other hand, machine learning engineer works to ship the model in production environment. Uh, skill set wise, uh, basically, they need to know, like, uh, data scientists need to know Python and R. They are uh, primarily used. Uh, then nah, they should be knowing, uh, working on different IDEs, like, you know, notebooks, Jupyter notebooks. And then they should also be able to query uh, data from different uh, cold storage solutions, like uh, Amazon Redshift or any such data warehouse solution. So these are the skill sets which they need. And on the other hand, machine learning engineer, they, they need to know Python. So you can see that Python is getting repeated and uh, like it is a really uh, important programming language when it comes to machine learning because most of the libraries are available in Python. Um, but uh, apart from that, they also need to know uh, about MLOps. They need to know about different deployment tools which they can use for uh, creating end-to-end -end ML pipelines, like AWS has something called a SageMaker pipeline. So definitely these are the tools which people should be knowing and uh, we have those covered in detail in the latest slides. So don't worry if you don't get hold of it at this point. Educational background, uh, generally uh, data scientists, applied scientists are having PhD or master's in computer science. Uh, or uh, a specification uh, in data science, like master's in data science. And on the other hand, uh, machine learning engineer, most of the time it's master's in computer science. So responsibility of a data scientist. Uh, so it starts with identifying relevant data sources for business needs, collecting structured and unstructured data then uh, organizing the data in usable formats. So like basically covering up the missing data, building predictive models, building machine learning algorithms, uh, then processing, cleaning, verifying the data, setting up data infrastructure, uh, analyzing the data for trends and patterns to find answers to specific questions, uh, then uh, assess the data quality, generate information and insights, uh, from data sets, uh, and then preparing report for executive and project teams, and then also create visualizations for data. So uh, this is generally the responsibility which data scientists have, uh, at least at bank companies. Required skill sets for data scientists. So basically you need to know the fundamentals of data science so what is the difference between machine learning and deep learning uh, you need to know the common tools and technologies you need to know what's the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning classification and regression problems so basically you need to know the fundamentals of data science uh, statistics so a uh, concept of descriptive statistics like mean median mode variance standard deviation various probability distributions, skewness, uh, inferential statistics. So that is another skill set which is required for a data scientist. Uh, for a programming knowledge, a programming knowledge uh, Python and R, we already discussed about that, but Python is something which is more primarily used. Uh, R is uh, used mainly in academic settings that what I've seen most of the PhDs working on R. R has like, more support for libraries, in my opinion. Data manipulation and analysis. Uh, so basically missing uh, 
filling missing values, how to do scaling, transformation. So making the data uh, in a state which can be used by the ML model that comes under data manipulation and analysis, because as you can imagine, there can be just so much, uh, uh, the data can be just skewed, the data can have a lot of irregularities. And so you need to clean the data. There is a separate thing which is called data cleaning. And then you have to transform the data, data in a way that the algorithm which, we are, you, which you are planning to use can actually use that data. So all of this comes under data manipulation and analysis. And then data visualization. So uh, you should be uh, familiar with uh, plots like histograms, bar charts, pie charts, waterfall charts. So different data visualization because that is the way you can know how the data is and you can also uh, present it to other folks and then they can learn from it. Machine learning models, so definitely regression model, ensemble model, hyperparameter tuning, a different kind of ML algorithms is something which a data scientist should know. Uh, deep learning, like uh, deep neural networks, convolutional neural networks, technical neural networks, uh, and then uh, knowledge of libraries like TensorFlow, Keras, PyTorch, so that is something which is needed. Uh, big data, okay, we are working with big data here when uh, we're talking about machine learning. So knowledge of Hadoop, Spark, uh, Hive, Apache Storm, those are things that are needed. Model deployment, SageMaker ML pipeline, uh, you may have to use it, but uh, mainly uh, AML engineer is someone who does that. And then definitely communication skills and structured thinking. So yeah, uh, just go through this slide once more. I know there's just a lot of information here. Uh, so take a minute to just process it and then we can move forward. So responsibilities of a machine learning engineer. Uh, so in a machine learning, for a machine learning engineer, they have to design ML systems. Uh, so they should be able to uh, research ML algorithms, which uh, a data scientist provides, or in some cases, machine learning engineer has to wear the data science hat and they have to actually do the analysis and come up with these ML algorithms. Then selecting the appropriate uh, data sets, identifying differences between data distribution that affects model performance. And that, that is very relevant when you are actually training the model. Then transforming and converting data science prototypes. So basically they, uh, these, there are prototypes which a data scientist create. And now a machine learning engineer has to make sure that that prototype is actually deployed in production and is used for uh, serving production traffic performing statistical analysis, uh, running machine learning tests, training and retraining the system, extending machine learning libraries, and developing machine learning apps according to uh, client requirements. So basically, um, the way that things work is in uh, typically within Fang, let's say you have a data scientist as well as a machine learning engineer in your team. So responsibility-wise, data scientists, they go, they research the data sets. So you start with like, okay, this is the problem which we have to solve. So let's say uh, we want to, all of us know about Mentacart and we have to uh, create like a recommendation system for Mentacart uh, where we recommend mentors to mentees or people who are visiting the site. So let's say we have a data scientist and we have machine learning engineers. So data scientists will go and they will look into different data sets which are available. So they will go into a um, Mentecart's database, they will see the data which is available, and then they will do some data cleaning, data transformation, uh, do some offline analysis, try out different ML algorithms, and then come up with ML algorithm features which are uh, needed, and then the hyperparameters. Uh, so these are the three output which offline analysis of data scientists provides to a machine learning engineer. So machine learning engineer gets, okay, uh, 
these are the features which are important when i say features these are like okay what are the attributes of a cust of a mentor uh, in this case which is needed so um, uh, industry experience let's say um, their educational background their industrial background uh, their papers their patents so those are the things which comes under features ml algorithm so let's say um, we're doing a recommendation system and uh, we come up with using something like KNN or uh, like K nearest neighbor kind of algorithm for this. And then the hyperparameters which are needed. So these are three things which a data scientist provides to machine learning engineer that, okay, I did data analysis. I spent three to four weeks doing this. And this is what I get. This is giving me the best results. So now the machine learning engineer deploys that thing in production. So actually, uh, that's the responsibility of machine learning to, to use those three inputs and then deploy a model in production, which is actually vending recommendation of mentors when people visit the site. So that's how the responsibilities uh, gets divided up, just to give you an idea. So skill sets required for machine learning engineer. Uh, uh, as an engineer, strong analytical and problem solving skills, software engineering skills, experience in data science, uh, coding uh, skills like Python and Java is something which is mandatory and knowledge of other uh, programming languages never heard. Uh, experience working in ML frameworks, experience working in ML libraries. So uh, SkyKit loan is something which is uh, primarily used in classical machine learning and then PyTorch or TensorFlow when it comes to DNN. Uh, understanding data structures and knowledge of computer architecture. So these are some of the preferred skill sets for MLE. And when I say preferred, it's basically when I said uh, you know earlier that MLE can may have to wear the uh, data science hat, let's say data scientist is not there, which may be the case in some teams um, so you need to have like advanced math and statistical skills uh, so knowledge of linear algebra Bayesian statistics uh, preferably a advanced degree in computer science or math uh, or a advanced or a master's degree in machine learning neural network deep learning uh, and related fields so these are the preferred skill sets of the MLE so uh, in the next section we are going to cover how to get started like uh okay you know what a mle is you uh, know what a data scientist what is their responsibility uh, what is the requirement in terms of the skill set now how do you get started so the way i've divided up the uh, next slides is that first i'll tell you what are the basic topics which you need to know for mle or a data scientist like regardless of any of the role you choose, what are the skill sets which you need to have? Then I'll go in into what is like a must know for data scientist roles and then uh, must know for MLE roles. And then definitely there's advanced topics which you can cover to have that cherry on the top. So let's cover the basics which you need to know regardless of MLE or a data scientist role. Uh, so let's see what's there. So understanding of machine learning algorithms. Uh, and uh, I will be uh, sharing this slide uh, post this presentation. Uh, so basically, you should be able to access these slides. And uh, then these links are super helpful. So what I've done is I've embedded these links uh, so that you actually uh, have it right away that where to go and look for things. Um, so these links uh, will be helpful to you. So machine learning uh, is all about machine learning algorithms. And so you need to know the algorithms that are available for a given problem, how they work, and how to get the most out of them. Uh, so in order to get started with uh, machine learning algorithms, you need to discover different type of machine learning algorithms. And this link, which I have provided here, uh, it should be able to help you with that. Uh, then discover the foundations of machine learning algorithms. So like diving a bit deeper into machine learning algorithm that what are different types of algorithm, what is the classification algorithm, what is the regression algorithm, how are these two different? Uh, so those are the things which uh, comes under the foundation of machine learning algorithms. 
and then discover how uh, top machine learning algorithms work. So how SVM work, how random files work, how a bagging classifier work, how ensembles work. So knowledge of the most popular machine learning algorithm, you should know that so that you can use that uh, judgment. You can use uh, that information while you're making a judgment about the ML algorithms which are being used. So this is something which you need to know regardless of a machine learning engineer or a data scientist. Uh, then Python machine learning. Uh, so Python is a language which uh, supports different tools like Pandas and Scikit-learn. Uh, and they are really operational in the deployment of a model. So uh, Python language is something which you should know regardless of data scientists or machine learning engineering role. So you should discover how Python is used in machine learning. So knowing about Scikit-learn, uh, just uh, using different uh, packages which it provides will be helpful. Again, I provided a link uh, for you so that it's easier for you to uh, kind of look into uh, Python and discover how it is being used and then discover the ecosystem of Python for machine learning. So basically, uh, these links will provide you insights into why Python is important and then the entire Python ecosystem, which is uh, there and can be used for machine learning, like is NumPy, and then there is Pandas, Scikit Learn, we have already talked about. So, apart from these, you know, machine learning libraries, so there's there are good uh, data visualization tools which are available in Python. And so, uh, knowing about those ecosystems will also be helpful. And then, uh, how to work through different problems using machine learning. So, even I provided a link here which can help you with your first machine learning project right away by just following the steps mentioned on this link. So yeah, these were the most important things which you need to know regardless of a data scientist or a MLE role which you're trying for. And let's see uh, some of the skills which are required more specifically for a data scientist. So uh, being for being a data scientist, you know, maths is something which is really important. So you should uh, be aware about uh, what probability is and then dive into different probability topics. And uh, like I said before, I have provided links here uh, for each of them as well. Then statistics, so you should be knowing about statistical concepts, uh, like what is mean, median, mode, variance, standard deviation. You should be aware about those things and skewness. Uh, so statistics is really important. And then linear algebra. So how, discover uh, what linear algebra is, why linear al algebra is used for machine learning, and then dive deeper into linear al algebra topics like vector, matrix, and so forth, like dot products, matrix dot products. Uh, so these links should be help, uh, helpful for you in exploring more. Optimizations for machine learning. This is another thing which you need to know for a data scientist role. So discover what optimization is. Uh, like there are different optimization techniques like uh, gradient de descent is one, then there is function loss. Uh, so there are different loss optimization techniques. So you should be knowing them. Uh, and then uh, diving into different optimizations which are required for model hyperparameter tuning. So every ML algorithm will have its own hyperparameters which you need to tune. And so how do you tune those hyperparameters to minimize the loss function? So that is what is uh, all about like optimizations which needs to be done in terms of hyperparameter tuning. It's really important topic. Uh, and I believe like uh, both MLEs and data scientists need to know that. Okay, so let's see uh, some concepts which MLE must know. Uh, so basically, in this case, I have used AWS uh, as the underlying cloud compute framework, but there are alternatives in Google Cloud and Azure. So yeah, regardless, I would say you should be aware about different you know, cloud compute frameworks. Uh, in this case, I'm using AWS. Um, but uh, yeah, Google Cloud or Azure, if you're using, they have uh, similar alternatives. So basically, uh, talking about 
AWS SageMaker. You should know how to launch training jobs, uh, deploy endpoints on SageMaker, which can be used to actually generate inferences in real time, evaluate data sets which, uh, with the batch transform jobs, and perform uh, custom processing jobs on raw data. So basically get accustomed with the SageMaker ecosystem, how it does training, deployment, more, uh, then data cleaning. So uh, be more conversant with that. Then designing your own workflow. So there are different ways that you can use. You can use AWS step function for doing that, or you can use SageMaker pipelines for doing that. So creating that entire ML workflow, and that goes to the first slide which I showed you. Uh, that you had that entire workflow, which starts with model training, uh, which starts with data uh, preparation, then model training, then model deployment. So the entire workflow uh, is something which uh, AMLE should be able to uh, build. And then definitely uh, monitoring ML workflow. So basically using tools like SageMaker Feature Store uh, to serve and monitor model data, configure SageMaker model monitor to generate and track metrics around the model, and then uh, uh, use Clarify to explain model predictions and surface biases in different models. So uh, this is more about monitoring the ML workflow once you have dialed up the model and you want to see how, the, how it's performing. So recommended books and courses, uh, I've linked these different courses at this point, feel free to go through them. And then for books, uh, I've also provided links for this. Cool. So that brings me to the end of uh, my presentation. I'm happy to take any questions at this point. Nitish, are you there? I think you are on mute. Yes, I'm there. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. All right. So, so all the people yeah. who are there in the session, I think we can now move forward for the Q&A especially. And I'm pretty sure that uh, people are having uh, a lot of questions as well in their mind. So first of all, ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause for Mr. Ankit Sirmoria. Uh, because I'm pretty sure that you have learned a lot of things uh, from him. And especially I can see the first question that uh, is asked by Ajay. Could you please elaborate on software engineering versus data science? Mm -hmm. Especially the role, so, software engineering and data science role. Yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, if you're talking about you know software engineers, uh, uh, just want to make sure that you're not talking about machine learning engineer, right? So it's like a software engineer who is not working on ML problems. So I'll, I'll assume that's the thing. So uh, uh, in software engineering, basically you don't have to, like most of systems are pretty deterministic. You know, uh, things which I mentioned was in machine learning things are probabilistic that, okay, will this feed work? Will it not work? You don't know, you, you just make, try to make a best guess, right? Uh, but, uh, and so it's probabilistic. And most of these algorithms are probabilistic. Software engineering is more deterministic where you are talking about service oriented architecture. You have different microservices talking to each other uh, and things are pretty deterministic. Uh, so let's say I'll give an example. Uh, so uh, taking again the example of mentor card here. So let's say you, uh, Come to MentorCard platform. You log in into MentorCard. You are able to browse through uh, different mentors. Uh, you are able to schedule sessions with them, right? So these things are deterministic. You know that you will be able to do that. And mostly uh, in this particular case, you will have like a backend, a web service built in Java or whatnot, and then a front end which has Java, which has JavaScript, CSS, HTML, right? So things are deterministic there, but in case of like data science role, it's mainly, okay, how do you generate or recommend mentors to, to people visiting the site? So that's like a, a difference in these two roles. Absolutely, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ankit. And now moving forward, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that you're writing your questions in the chat box.
if you've got questions you can write it in the chat box and uh, and also uh, yes we have got the next question by dilip is asking that ml engineer learn software development machine learning engineer learn software development uh yeah i i think it's the other way around like you start with software development and then you learn machine learning uh so yeah typically like if you are an ml engineer most likely you are also a software engineer because you start there you first of all no you need to know uh, how uh, these different web services were what is software development you need to know about soa like service oriented architecture and then you can apply machine learning on top of it so it's the other way around you need to know software development to be an ml engineer is true and uh, all the people uh, yes you can again write your questions in the chat box we're expecting few more questions from your side and now ajay is saying that job market comparison software development versus data science number of jobs yeah uh, so basically I, i don't know the numbers definitely it's very difficult to uh, actually even uh, have a number around it uh, on top of my head uh but uh, yeah the the thing is that uh i was talking with couple of recruiters from different bank companies and they said that in 2020 they hired more mles in comparison to software developers so that was something which uh, which is the data point i know of and definitely if you think about it every software product is eventually a data product because every software is collecting data and uh, uh, they will uh, eventually use that data to build more intelligent systems right so uh, yeah like uh, it's it's just a eventuality that uh, data science will be part of software development and it will become you know not, currently it's nice to have but in future it will be like a must have so i i see that uh, in in future like every software development role will uh, will be actually be preferring someone with a data science skill absolutely thank you so much and uh, the next question uh, what's the advantage of mba students so yeah i'd like to elaborate this question for uh, from shalini because when i was interacting with them some of them are from the mba background so i'm assuming that some of them are in from the non technical background so especially people who are doing their mba who are from non technical background and they want to start their career in the tech field uh maybe it could be managing maybe it could be product management so uh, please elaborate the uh, technical uh, uh, the the you can say managerial aspect of software development and all so what kind of career opportunities are there what kind of roles are there and especially people who are coming from non tech background uh, maybe from mba uh, or other non technical background so how they can look into this uh, this technical world how they can look into it so please yeah, elaborate yeah. on that yeah that's a good question uh so i i would say for an mba product management is uh, a really good way to uh, come in tech um, so there are product managers uh, who lead ml projects um, so th- i i would recommend that that to be the best route for them all right yes now moving forward uh, dilip is saying that uh, in software development in flask or django uh, which are the best in ml yeah uh, so django and flask they're not used for ml uh, basically uh, when we are talking about ml the tools uh, are jupyter notebooks so those are the things which are actually used for uh, executing the code and creating the model and making inferences and eventually using something like uh, aws technologies or any cloud compute technologies i would say uh like sage maker is something which people should be knowing uh you can't like develop something uh in django or flask using uh like for ml all right thank you moving forward uh, we have got question from ajay he's saying he's asking that does data science require data structure skills yeah to some extent you will uh, require data structure skills so basically like let's say you are doing some computation you should be knowing how to you know, iterate through arrays or list uh, there may be some um, algorithms which you have to use uh, uh, 
Uh, not a lot, but definitely some amount of data structure knowledge would be helpful. Definitely less than what a software engineer should know. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Now moving forward, uh, we've got an interesting question from Himani Singh and she's asking that, is Python still going to be prevalent in coming time? If not, then what other programming languages we should learn? Yeah, I, I think Python will be prevalent uh, in the foreseeable future. Uh, so if you don't know Python, I would definitely recommend learning Python and how Python works with these uh, ML frameworks. Uh, as I said, I'll be sharing the slide and in those slides, you can find the links for them. Uh, but like, you, if let's say if you already know Python uh, and you need to know what next can I, uh, can I uh, learn, which can be helpful for machine learning. Uh, so in that case, I would recommend either learning R or learning and R if you're going down the data science route, uh, because there are some libraries which are in R, but you don't have in Python. Uh, but if let's say you're going the MLE route, I would say Scala. All right. Uh, now moving forward, the next question we have got from Ajay and is asking, I'm confused between trying to crack Fang in software development versus data science. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so as I said, like if you have, let's say a master's at least in, in machine learning or in computer science with a concentration in machine learning, then I would say, and, and you know, again, it, it's like a personal uh, question that, you know, are you someone who liked mathematics? Are you someone who likes statistics? So if yes, then data science is uh, the way to go. But if you're someone who uh, is not so much into mathematics or statistics uh, and is still wants to be in this uh, ML ecosystem, I would recommend going down the MLE route. All right, now moving forward, I think uh, we've got an important question. Abhishek is asking that MLE starting package for engineers. Emily, like I can tell in Fang what it is. So uh, I think in India, uh, and don't quote me for this, but from what I know uh, is around uh, like 30 lakhs per annum, uh, like a college hire gets around that. All right, now moving forward, the next uh, question we've got from Dilip is asking that, uh, a Kegel profile effect on placements. Does a Kegel profile has any effect on placements? A lot, a lot. I yeah. If if you have a Kegel profile, you participate in Kegel competitions. It's really amazing. And being on the interviewer side, if I see those things on the resume, it just uh, stands out. So yeah, it's super helpful if you uh, are aware about Kegel and you are and you are participating in that. All right, and the next question is asking that how to collect data when running website. How to collect data? Uh, okay, I don't understand the question completely when running website, but uh, I would assume that if you're running a web application, then how do you collect data? If that's the, if that's what Dilip you're asking, it means that you know. Let's say again, going back to the mentor card example. You, uh, mentor card has a has a database, right? So all the interactions which uh, people are doing with on the mentor card platform, they are getting recorded in the database, and uh, that's how you would go around collecting the data. So that's like you know one data set, and then other than that, like uh, you know there are data sets which are available online uh, from uh, like different uh, authorities, and so you can collect those data as well. So, so there, I know that there are public data available for, you know, archive Facebook uh, information, archive uh, Twitter information, and similarly, there are different other websites as well. So those are the places where you can get data. All right, thank you, sir. Now moving forward, Ajay is saying that where are you sending that PPT presentation? So yes, Ajay, um, uh, we will be coordinating with you later on uh, about the uh, presentation. Mr. Ankit will be sharing us, then we'll be able to share it with you. So now, uh, and he's, he's asking another question that does college matter in data science, ML placement? Uh, so basically, uh, in fan companies, I would say colleges or degrees uh, typically don't tend 
to matter that much if you have the skill set. The most important thing is the skill set. And then let's say, you know, let's say you are from a college where bank companies don't visit. Uh, so what you can do is create a good profile on Kaggle, okay? Uh, and then uh, uh, create your own portfolio about what you have done, do your projects, create a resume, put all those things there and then apply or get referred uh, from someone in these companies. And uh, that should be the path forward. So it, it's it's not important that, okay, this person has to be from IIT or NIT that I recruit that person. If that person has that required skill set, then colleges don't matter. And if that person is from IIT, NIT and does not have that skill set, then that will also not work. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Now, moving forward, uh, Abhishek is asking if someone has no work experience, but wanted to start. So which field is best for them? Uh, so it depends on the person, right? Uh, that what they want to do. Um, so as I said, like if you are starting from scratch, uh, then my word of advice is you need to kind of ask that question to yourself that um what is the role which interests you more i already have provided you know details about what is required for data scientists and ml if you know maths and statistics is something which excites you more then you know go down the data science route and uh, uh, there are tons of resources which are available i've also linked some so go down that route uh, and create a portfolio apply to companies and if you think that mle is the route uh, which you have to go, then uh, yeah, like to uh, build your portfolio in those lines, like where you have worked on uh, creating and deploying models. So uh, at the end, what matters is uh, like what you want, what interests you more, and then build your portfolio in those lines. Absolutely. And moving forward, the next question we have got by Dilip, how to do data cleaning? Yeah, so there are different techniques for data cleaning, right? And it uh, depends based on the use case uh, that if the data is skewed, then there is one technique which is being used. If uh, let's say there are some empty rows, then there's another technique which is uh, which has to be used. Then there's some transformation which needs to be done. So uh, there are just so many techniques which you can use for data cleaning it, and it depends uh, what that particular use case is. But yeah, the links which I have provided in those slides will be able to help you with that. And so you can know different data cleaning techniques and when to use what. Absolutely. And sir, the next question we have got from Lakshmi, she's asking that, sir, what will be the right, uh, what will be right in this for MBA students? Uh, for MBA students, I would uh, say that uh, go more to the, towards the product management route. Um, and I think uh, MentorCart is already planning to have some sessions on product management. Uh, however, let's say, you know, uh, this is something which interests you and I'm not sure, Lakshmi, how much you are conversant with like machine learning or software development. Uh, but if, if, if you want to uh, go down that route and uh, be more of a like individual contributor rather than a product manager, then yeah, I would say, uh, ask that question again to yourself that, okay, is uh, data science more attracting you or Emily and then go down that route. Absolutely. All right, Mr. Angit, the next question we have got from Ajay Mohiti again. And his question is that, is there any age limit for any starting role in FANG companies for someone who is willing to switch from service-based company to a product-based company? Uh, I don't think there's any age limit. Uh, However, one thing which uh, you should keep in mind is how much years of experience you have. So let's say if you have around 10 years of industry experience, then it's highly unlikely that these bank companies will interview you for a college hire position. Or let's say in Amazon, it's uh, uh, like a MLE one or a data scientist one role. Then Amazon will most likely hire you for um, like MLE2 or try to hire you for MLE2 or data scientist role. And that will apply across different uh, companies, I would say, at least the bank companies. So yeah, like as you can imagine, the uh, 
criteria for MLE2 will be more than MLE1. So you should be aware of that. There's no age limit, but yeah, depending upon your ESO experience, you will fall under one of the brackets. Absolutely. And the next question we have got by Himani. She's asking that what skills do we need for data visualization and data modeling? Yeah, I, I would say, you know, there are different libraries uh, which are available in uh, Python. Uh, so those are the ones which uh, are really helpful. I know that uh, NumPy has good one. Uh, then Pandas also have good data visualization tools. So the uh, whole point here is, you know, Python and different ML libraries like NumPy, Pandas, SkyKit. So even if you have these three things, most of your bases are covered for both you know data visualization and data modeling so learn python learn these couple of libraries i mentioned and you know if you're not able to put, you know, like note that down yet don't worry i already have links for them so you should be able to access them there absolutely thank you so much uh, thank you so much mr ankit for sharing all your valuable insights and uh, i'm pretty sure that people have got a lot of insights and uh, thank you so much for sharing all the value and also in the meantime i'd like to uh, um, i'd like to do an announcement for all the people who are there in the session and uh, this announcement is regarding another live session which will be happening tomorrow and especially the inter uh, the session is going to be all about crack your interviews like a pro if you are a student you uh, want to start your uh, you want to start your career in companies like uh, fan companies or any other companies and you are preparing for your placements especially this live session is going to help you because this is going to be solely focused on your uh, cracking your interview and this interview will be taken by x microsoft so you will be getting a lot of insights regarding cracking your interviews so that is how you'll be able to understand things in a better way all right having said that Ladies and gentlemen, the session is tomorrow at 8 p.m. We'll be communicating the same to you on your WhatsApp group. So make sure that you're checking it out and you're joining tomorrow again. With this, uh, now we'll be moving forward. Thank you so much, Mr. Ankit, for sharing all your valuable insights. And we'll be keep on coming back with more such insightful sessions. And thank you so much. And also thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us in this very late evening. And this shows that how dedicated you people are and we wish you all the best. And if there's any assistance you need, if there's any, any help you needed from us, you can always reach out to MentorCard. We'd be more than happy to help you uh, to connect with the best suitable mentors or it could be any kind of assistance in your career. So with this, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. We hope to see you in the next live session. Thank you so much, Mr. Angit, for your time. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Nitesh. Bye. Bye, sir. All right, uh, Ajay, you are already in the WhatsApp group. I assume, I'm assuming you're already in the WhatsApp group, but if you're still not there, you can just DM me on this number on WhatsApp. I'll be adding you to WhatsApp. I'm just sharing my number in the chat box. Hi, Ajay, if you're listening to me, I've shared my number in the chat box. You can drop me a text by tomorrow and uh, we'll be adding you to the WhatsApp group. I'm assuming you're in the WhatsApp group, but still, if you're not there, no problem. We'll be adding you later on. So, all right. Thank you so much for joining. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Riti Stopo officially signing off. And uh, yes, have a great night. Good night.